I'm Cheryl Jones, host of Joy for Midlife Women. Welcome to the December program. And this is the last month of the year, so I would really like to thank you for tuning in to the program over the months. And I hope that some of the guests or the topics that we've had on the program has been helpful to you in some way during your journey. So this month, my program is about aging with joy making your golden years truly golden. Yeah. So have you heard of this this, um, phrase, it gets greater later? It does, and it can. Have you ever thought about um, changing your career or doing something really different in your 50s, 60s, or 70s? I didn't really envision a career change at all, but you know, Being in a social circle with other women and you start to see the women take on um, new challenges and um, just trying new things and living out their dreams, that can be motivating. And you know, you start to say, I can do that. So you can do it. Now there's another phrase that I heard about and it's called conscious aging. And that means accepting and enjoying life at every stage. Do you remember um, how you felt at younger birthdays? What were you thinking age meant at that time? Like, I think about being 13, 18, 20, my 30th birthday. Those were really exciting times. And each birthday felt like an achievement. It felt like another step towards adulthood, independence, freedom. So you know, over the years, as we grow in age, we can still have those feelings. Um, We just have to ignore those messages that we see out there like over the hill. And you know, society tries to get us to believe that as we age, our value declines. That's not true. And so we must move past those negative messages about aging and embrace the age that we are, live every day with joy, amplify our joy of living. So like, what are my two suggestions for um, amping up your joy as you age? I think one is seeking moments of awe and wow. You know, that's like having an experience that leaves you with wow or an excitement or your adrenaline starts flowing and sometimes a new knowledge base for you. And the second thing I think about amping up your joy is keeping with a social um, or cultural group in your community, attending those type of events, which can help you um, explore, learn new things, but also gives you an opportunity to share your life experiences. And that's what living with joy is about. So, you know, maybe we find ourselves stopping or changing what we do or how we do it. And that's not always because we can no longer do something, but it may be because we don't get the same enjoyment or excitement from those things. We just need a new adventure some new excitement, again, that's putting joy in our life, amping up the joy in our life. So now, let's talk about reality. I know, and our golden years can bring achy joints, achy muscles, some new life challenges, but we have wisdom from years, and we have to start to use that wisdom to help us persevere to keep living with joy. I think about some birthday messages that I've heard around golden years. Sometimes you you probably heard them on birthday cards, read it on a birthday card. I like them because they're real um, inspiring, such as um, you're 50 and fantastic, or 60 and still sexy, or 70 and sensational. But I like this one, 80 and wise, and wonderful beyond your years. See, those are the messages and the thoughts that we need to keep in mind so that we continue to age with joy. 
And you know, um, another message I keep around, and I apologize for this broken mug handle, but it says, dream until your dreams come true. We need some positive affirmations or messages around um, to keep aging with joy. And you can see this is tried and true. It's been here and it's still hanging on. So um, I keep looking at that and it's inspiring. So do you need a few ideas of a new experience um, to amp up your joy in life? Live out your golden years with golden opportunities? Think about travel. So locally or abroad, and not just on a plane ride. Maybe get on a train and take um, a long train ride across the country maybe. Try out some of those sleeping spots in the train and such. Try a cruise. You could also think about a couple's trip or a single's trip. And you know, you can contact your local senior centers, social clubs, church. They all have travel groups that might be of interest to you. So, what about gardening? And I'm not thinking about the typical traditional outdoor garden. I'm thinking about specialty gardening, like um, herb gardening in your home. That's also a healthy opportunity for you. Or maybe picking a particular, particular floral or bonsai plant that you'd like to learn to cultivate. And there's also so social groups around that activity. You could think about fitness and um, try a silver sneakers fitness program or a Tai Chi class. I love it. I'm experiencing a Tai Chi class now. And you could join a social group online or within your community. And then another great um, way to amp up your joy is to join a volunteer group. Volunteer within your community. Uh, you could join a um, go to the open pantry and volunteer. But you know what's really interesting and always in need is mentoring for the youth and grandparent mentoring, uh, volunteer groups. So that could be interesting. Now, if you like a solo activity, perhaps you'd like to start writing and maybe you'll write a novel one day. But you could also if showcase your talent. Now I know many of you have talents you sang at one point or danced or told stories, whatever it is, you could consider the Miss Senior pageant, which is in every state and is for women 60 and over. So that's just a few ideas of how to amp up your joy, make your golden years golden, keeping your golden years. Um, sharing with you on this program and publishing the Joy Magazine are my new stage of adventures that, has, um, that I really enjoy. And I have to thank you, my viewers and my subscribers to the magazine for keeping me inspired and helping me to do it. So you can age with joy. Yes, you can. And um, I wanna leave a question with you to think about answer for yourself. Is there something you've been putting off in life? And in this coming new year, what is one step you can take to move forward to age with joy? That's it. I want to thank you for tuning in today. And I look forward to sharing more with you in 2024. I always appreciate your feedback. You can contact me via email. My email address is joyeditor19 at gmail.com. You could also contact me and leave me a message on the website, which is www.thejoymagazine.com. If you have any questions or you'd like to contribute to this program, be a guest on the program, or you know someone that would make a good guest for women over 50, I'd love to know about it. So stay healthy and stay joyful until next next year
Welcome back. Cheryl Jones here with Joy for Midlife Women. You know, I thought you might enjoy some clips from our previous programs that we've aired on this channel. You can find Joy for Midlife Women on um, YouTube. Just search Joy for Midlife Women and you'll find a host of topics. They will include guests that I've interviewed, they've been on the program, or topics like now that I just sit and talk to you ramble about. So some of the topics that we've had is local theater. And um, you might enjoy that, but we brought the director in and um, give you some real valuable information about what's going on in the local community of Connecticut. And we've had other topics like essential oils for health, or uh, we had a guest on for silver sneakers for fitness. We've talked about other topics that were trending like bone health for women over 50, skin care for women over 50, um, how to journal. All those topics are available for you. Take a quick look. It's on YouTube. Just look up Joy for Midlife Women. So I hope you enjoy these clips and you might want to know what the episode number is and you should see that there too. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, Cheryl. My email is joyeditor19 at gmail.com. Thank you. Needs to do fundraising yes, we to do. meet all the needs in the community. Mm -hmm. How did it work out well? It or? worked out very well. It was very successful. And thank you for mentioning that because um, I think I mentioned last time on your show, we don't qualify for state or federal funding because okay. we don't take any information. Anybody that walks in the door gets a meal. Okay. So we are grant and donation based. Okay. I am constantly trying to look for new and exciting ways to fundraise, to have events that are fun for the community so that they are successful. Yes. So the gala was great. Um, keep your eye open. I think we're going to be doing a golf tournament next fall. That will be the big event. But in between, we're just trying to find you know new and exciting ways to That's reach, right. reach the community, get our funding. And I bet that's challenging because even organizations that are federally funded are still out there having mm -hmm. to do private funding and grant writing so that they can keep up their services. Absolutely. I, that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. We're going to go inside and think about our bone health because if we want to stay vibrant, we have to stay fit and have good, healthy bones. So you may want to take notes, grab your pen and paper, and let's get started. Okay, I want to share some facts with you about our bone health. About 8 million women in, in the United States have osteoporosis, and 30 million more women may get the disease, which can cause bones to break with something as harmless as a sneeze, according to the National Osteoporosis Foundation. We can't, on our own, identify the beginning of bone density loss. The thing about bones is you can't see or feel that they're getting weak. The good news is that there is a mineral density test that your physician can provide you, and some of you may have had this test. Our health after age 50 and 60 may be different, but it doesn't have to be downhill. We do have time to ensure good bone health with simple changes like eating more vitamin C and D, and eating more fruits and veggies. Most importantly, to help our bones, we must continue to exercise at home and to focus on weight training. Just like our muscles, bones too get stronger with physical activity. So what changes can we expect to see in our skin as we move into the 50s and 60s? Ooh, the 50s and the 60s, the best times, it was the worst of times. Right. So hydration is key. We are nothing unless we're hydrated from the inside. Think of a raisin, that good old, it used to be a grape. Mm. You get the fine lines that you used to never think about. Hydration, so that is the most important. However, you wanna exfoliate frequently and get the dry dead cells off. You want to think about like a chapped, chapped lip and you get all that built up dead skin. You need to remove that on a regular basis. Okay. While it's protected from the sun, it does nothing to show a healthy, bright skin, which is so important today. Okay. Then you wanna use a nice cleanser, 
we like to use a glycolic acid cleanser. Our glycolic acid comes from fruit, so it's all natural. Mm -hmm. That also helps slough off the dead cells mm -hmm. uh, very mildly. And it's super important for that nice, bright, fresh skin that the media and everybody else thinks is so important. Okay. However, you're nothing without that hydration. Hydration. That, I hear a lot about hydration. Yeah. So that's putting more moisture into our skin? Putting more moisture on the inside, okay. which plumps us up. Think about the grape, okay. right? We go right. back to the grape mm -hmm. and how soft and smooth. Yeah. And then it dries out eventually, unfortunately, uh -huh. and you look not like the grape that's anymore. Not, that's where the wrinkles come from? That's where the wrinkles come from. Okay. So let's start with what is the Silver Sneakers program? The Silver Sneakers program is actually an amazing program. It's a national program, matter of fact, the largest national community fitness program for the senior population. Excellent. So how do we find the Silver Sneakers program? How would a senior hear about it? Well, the Silver Sneakers program is every, everywhere it's in everywhere. the United States. Okay. Everywhere. So, being involved with your health care, your mm -hmm. insurance programs, it's insurance-based program. Okay. A lot of the Medicare Advantage programs that insurance offer, plus a lot of the supplementary programs they offer, and now, too, a lot of the retirement programs with the insurance companies offer the benefit of the silver sneakers. Okay. Which is, if it's there, and they're offering it, they're offering it for a reason. There's, there's a reason why we're trying to get the seniors moving yes. and exercising okay. to stay healthy. Okay. And it's a benefit to the insurance company. Certainly, it sounds like it. So with Silver Sneakers, it sounds like an excellent fitness program and that we can hear about it through our insurance resources. Exactly. Correct? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And we sign up through the insurance resources or we find the location that we're looking for. So what you will do, you can mm -hmm. go on to silversneakers.com okay. and go on their web page. Tivity is the parent company that yes. gets this, the, all the insurance programs on board. Mm -hmm. You can go on to silversneakers.com and um, enroll and retrieve your fitness number. And okay. then you can see in the community who is offering the Silver Sneakers program. Okay. Whether it be a Parks and Rec, for Health Tracks, our 15 clubs all over New England. We have a site in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We have a huge Silver Sneaker program that started like this okay. and has grown so popular. Just they did a lot of attendees. A lot of attendance, Excellent. too. It's Excellent. just amazing how it's there, but a lot of times seniors have never been involved yes. in any type of exercise movement program. So it's foreign okay. to a lot of seniors mm -hmm. too, but that's our job is the community fitness programs to get them involved. Get them involved. Have Sounds like also a fun social time too. Social is half half of what the program's all about half of it okay so the seniors they connect whether they're, whether they're coming in for once a week or three times a week and some of them are coming in five times a week oh, wow. to do the classes mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is just making the connections with friends okay with new friends and become lifelong friends so i think it should be called fit fun Fit silver sneakers, fun, right? <laughs> fit fun community right yep. there at Health Trucks. Wow. It, yeah, very it, good. it is amazing too. And and the population mm -hmm. 40 years ago, and matter of fact, Silver Sneakers is celebrating 30 years. Excellent. 30 years. Congratulations. Yeah, that wow. is like a woo woo oh, moment yes, for it is. senior wellness. Today's show is about handbags. And I have a lot of handbags around here with me. Sometimes um, when you go shopping, you have to make a lot of decisions about the handbags. And um, I love a cute bag. Sometimes I want a shoulder strap bag. Sometimes I want a little handle bag. I might even want a tote bag. But you know, that's one thing you have to think about. I also think about the color. Is it gonna match my wardrobe? 
And then I think about the hardware and, you know, the inside, how many pockets it has and such. But most importantly, I do think about the price, of course. And um, then I look at the bag to see if there's a name on it. Is it a designer name? Is it a high-end designer? But I will be honest with you, I don't generally be concerned about the designer name on a bag. I haven't been because I think that all bags are designers, right? You know, that person took a lot of time to create the bag, to style it, to put the lining in and decide how many pockets and what kind of hardware it was going to be. So I'm thinking all bags could be designer bags. But my guest today doesn't have that same thought process. In fact, she is um, a lover and collector of high-end designer luxury bags. Her favorite designers are Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Her name is Rebecca, and her brand is The Bag Lady. Her passion for high-end designer handbags moved to a peak in her midlife. Um, she became an empty nester. She had a little more time on her hands. She had a little more savings to spend. And she has learned so much about the high-end designer luxury bags. She has so much, so much knowledge on this topic that I've named her the connoisseur of designer bags. Just recently, the wellness section in the publication that I have, The Joy mm -hmm. Magazine, we did an article the contributor wrote about wellness, yes. and she said to do some food journaling. So mm -hmm. that, that was my first time hearing about a specific type mm -hmm. of journaling. So I guess there's a lot of types of journaling that we yes. could do. There's mm -hmm. um, food journal, um, gratitude journal, thankful journal, uh, spiritual journal, like you said, a business journal. Okay. Um, personal journal, look, a goals journal. Mm -hmm. So whatever journaling is, whatever you want to work on at that time, you could create a journal. I know some people have all of those journals. They have a notebook for every single one. Wow. I'm not that advanced yet. <laughs> I'm there, okay. but I think, I think I turned my one journal into all of that, but some people have a physical journal, one for healing, one for children, one for business, one for spouse, one for relationships, one for whatever they're doing. So they have wow. separate journals and, and okay. collect their thoughts that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it beneficial to go back and read what you've journaled yes. or not? Very beneficial because you can see where you've come from to where you are. Writing oh. it down is very cathartic the first time. Okay. But when you go back and read it, you're like, wow, I was in a bad place there. Wow, I was in a really good place. And you can see how you've advanced and mm, how you've overcome. I, like that. I have journals from when I'm back in college and I read them sometime. I'm like, ooh, I wasn't doing too well then. But you know what I mean? If you go back and read it, you get to see how far you've actually come. Because you okay. don't see it when you're in it. When you're in trauma or, or or, or despair, something you don't see what you're in. Mm -hmm. You can feel it, but you're not really sure you've overcome it. So you right. go back and read it and see Did where you are now compared to where you were. Wow. And that can help boost your, your self-esteem and encourage yourself to keep going. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Does journaling ever fall into um, getting one to start writing? Like writing professionally, Possibly. writing columns, articles, or anything like that? Possibly. You if you think? have the love of writing already, mm -hmm. journaling could definitely spur that off because you could start with a newsletter or, okay. a little, or you could be a little uh, blog post could start okay. that. And then as you start doing it, you could get more cathartic and like it more and end up doing um, a newspaper or like a, like a magazine like you have or even uh -huh. a book. Okay. That's great. That's really great. So what... Um, would you say would be some of the benefits? Because we are women over 50 mm -hmm. that we're talking to and trying to share tips with. Um, how would journaling help help that audience, our it senior is. audience, our aging audience? Journaling reduces stress. Uh -huh. It creates self, um, great self-knowledge and self-worth. Um, it helps you process skills that you've had. And now that you're older, you can write down all your skills. Um, I have this prompt, general prompt to my clients, and I say, write down 77 reasons why you are the ish. And I make them write down 77 things that makes them who they are. And a lot of people think that they don't have like, that. Like what? Like um, I'm, um, I'm a holistic wellness coach. Um, I had a child at oh, 40. Okay. I started my business at 54. I bought my house at 50. You know, things that are remarkable in your but, life but build up over time that you don't pay attention to yes, it. You know, I was honored yes. by the state of Massachusetts when I was 20, you know, a few years ago for my work in the community. You don't 
realize those things matter to you, list them all out, and you're like, wow, wow. I have done a lot of stuff. Look at all the roles and look, look at everything I've yeah, done. Yeah, I do yeah. have the knowledge. I do have mm -hmm. the information because a lot of times when we get older, we get stuck. We're used to being mom, brother, sister, wife, co-worker, whatever, and we don't really get to be us. Right. And journaling is a way to get back to us. It helps your mental health. It helps your physical health. It helps your well-being. Um, journaling, I believe, is very good for mental health because it reduces your stress and your anxiety about something. You have all those hats on, and you're always, for most people, you're always the last person in your life. Wow. And journaling makes you bring yourself forth to be first. Oh, I like that. Self-care is That needs selfish. to be on the front of a journal, right? <laughs> you are first. You are first. You know? That's right. Self-care is not selfish, it's necessary. Okay. But we have been taught, especially women and women of color most times, that it's selfish to be self it's selfish to think of yourself. And okay. it's not. Right, you, that's right. You're supposed to give from your overflow. You have to fill yourself up and then your overflow is what you can give to other people. Mm -hmm. However, most time being mothers and wives and whatever, we give from our cup all the time and we're never really full. That's right. And then you hit about fifty fifty four, you're like, What? has happened. Yes. Where am I going? What have I been doing? You know, the kids start to leave, the emptiness, things yep. start to come. Yep. You're like, wow, now, now what do I do next? Because you forgot yourself. Yes. You lose yourself sometimes in these roles. And journaling helps you stay current and keep yourself self of mind when you're, when you're in these yeah. roles. Hello, readers of Joy Magazine. I'm talking about my book, Professional Women's Guide to Handling Stress. So I wanted to pass on those anecdotal information pieces that others can use to create a world around them where that stress would be decreased. I hope the information, the exercises in the book, breathing exercises and nutritional advice and exercise advice uh, will help with all the readers' stress levels. Thank you. This is my publication and along with other women that contribute towards the magazine on health and wellness and recipes and more. Um, if you're interested, go to www.thejoymagazine.com and um, we'll love to hear from you about what you're reading and what other topics you'd like to hear on this program. So I wish you a wonderful day and until next month, stay joyful.